Good day, everyone. Welcome to another edition of In Nature's Realm or Fly Fishing in Nature's Realm. Now we're continuing on with our fly time videos. Now um, we had a, requ a request from a gentleman by the name of Daryl, and Daryl uh, requested um, the bag fly. So that's the fly we're going to tie today. Is the bag fly? Now the bag fly, a bit of history behind it. Um, I first come across the bag fly, and there's a there's a couple of different ties um, that are out there, but um, the the actual bag fly I saw was when I was a member of the Sunshine Fly Casting Club, and um, at the Sunshine Fly Casting Club was one of the foundation members, uh, the late uh, Ron Masson. And Ron was a great bloke, he was a great fisherman and an unbelievable fly tie. And um, he at the club would uh, often demonstrate um, a lot of different patterns that he had developed and uh, other flies that he tied. And one of the flies he showed us was the bag fly. Now the bag fly um, that Ron showed us, there was one main difference to other fly, uh, bag flies that I've seen in other articles or other magazines and that was the addition of a red hackle throat um, which is you know, you know a big attractor uh, for a lot of different fish and, and trout in particular so i watched ron tie this fly um, he gave me one i took it home copied it and um, fished it down at a number of different reservoirs and lakes around Victoria and oh my god does it catch fish does it catch trout it's incredible it really is and um, I've really had a lot of uh, success with the bag fly and particularly at Newlands Reservoir for some reason it really works there well um, and it's obviously imitating the uh, smelt or the bait fish within our lakes and um, yeah I can't uh, I really, if you haven't got a bag fly in your fly box, you really are missing out, trust me. Um, so, um, that's basically the history of the bag fly. Um, so now, let's, uh, let's learn how to tie it, alright? So, we'll firstly start off with a long shank size 10 hook. And um, you can use any type of hook that you would uh, prefer. Um, a lot of people like it a bit shorter. Um, maybe even a bit bigger, but it's up to yourself. Um, now the materials that we need will be up above me, there for everyone to see. And our next requirement is 60 black thread. So we'll start to tie that on to the hook. And we need these to be nice and tight. All the way down to the bend of the hook. Cut away the uh, the actual excess there, and then advance down towards the bend of the hook. Again, when we're in line with the bow, which is around about there. All right. Now the next thing we need to do is to tie in the tail. Now the tail is black cock hackle fibers and as we can see here we've got the, uh, the Indian cape there and that's all you need you can use a genetic cape if you want but really um, you know you only need the stiff fibers from a cheap cape so we'll select a black feather on this cape at the back here and we will once we've done that there we go there's a good one then what we do is we select the fibers on the side and these need to be straight and stiff just a small bunch doesn't have to be big make sure that you've got it all lined up And there we have the fibers in. Now let's tie that in. Now 
All right, now we'll cut away the excess. All right, now the next item that we require it is um, ultra gold wire um, small size so we select ourselves a length of that and we tie that in now when you do tie this in make sure you cover the whole length of the hook shank so you need to line it up with near the eye of the hook and then we need to tie it in like so so gold wire is in position next we get ourselves um, gold tinsel now I have a, a large reel that I bought and this has lasted, lasted me a long time this one um, I don't know how much is on there but there's a lot most of them come in those small size but occasionally you'll see this I remember it was at uh, complete fly fisher and I had these there and I bought it straight away because there's so much um, gold tinsel on there so again we select ourselves a length of the gold tinsel and again cover the entire length of the hook shank and then advance your way back towards the eye of the hook now the reason why we put in the length um, in there is so that we don't have any you know, too thick uh, section it needs to be nice and even along the hook shank uh, it's hard to avoid the back part but if we can avoid it so much the better and we've got that position there okay now our next requirement is to tie the body with the gold tinsel now we need to make sure and it's pretty hard to avoid this okay but we don't want any gaps um, when we're tying the gold tinsel on because it'll come through as black lines and it won't, won't look as it doesn't matter with the trout but uh, again the fly fisherman will say you know <clears throat> not really good but trust me we can do it with a bit of patience so we tie that on Get it close to each turn. like a long shank it just creates a bit of fly so we've got a lot more to cover and then we get to the just before the eye of the hook and we tie that in nice and tight And we cut away the excess there. Alright, now as you can see, we may have some gaps that we missed and so forth. So, what we can do with the gold wire is we can cover those gaps. 
So that's our next requirement now, is to grab the gold wire and come the other way and then see if we can fill up those gaps. Sometimes we can, sometimes we can't because we need to make the segmentation of the fly nice and even each time we do make a turn. So we make the same width, width as the last turn. And also this segmentation makes the fly um, more sturdier, um, longer lasting and again because it adds more um, clint it, uh, it just enhances the fly. Just before the eye. We tie that in and then cut away the excess. Okay, so we've got the tail, we've got the body of tinsel and the segmentations with the gold wire. Now our next requirement is to get ourselves um, red feathers. Now you could have it um, any shade of red you like, the brighter the better I always imagine. Um, and this one's a good one that I like, it's just a, a cock hackle cut and it's been dyed red it's one of the Indian ones again which which um, which is good so we break away the fibers off the feather there Then make sure it's all nice and even. All right, now we turn the fly upside down. So we now put in the throat hackle. Now we line it up, judging the length that we want there. Once that's been tied in place, we then cut away the excess. Alright. So there's our throat hackle. Let's tighten that. Alright, not far away from completion. The last thing is the wing, and what we do is use Hessian bag fibers. Okay, so there you can see the Hessian bag, and that's why it's called the bag fly because of these Hessian bag fibers. And you know, this is another um, excellent part of the fly. The Hessian bag, when it's wet, really gives the appearance of uh, you know, a fish's uh, flesh, you know what I mean? and um, it's fantastic. Now we take from that two strands of the hessian and as we can see there we've got two nice long ones so even them up. Now the next thing we need to do is we get our bobbin noodle and we don't just tie that on like that what we do is we get our bobbin noodle and we, using the point, we go in between the strand and
we pry it apart. And what it does is, this prying of it is, it gets rid of all the unwanted fibres, the, the rubbish fibres I tend to call them, and it makes the, the actual strands a lot cleaner. As you can see, or I hope you can see, is those strands coming out. And that's about what we want there. And as you'll see, it's a lot cleaner, especially when you do tie it. Another exercise I do is to trim the back of the actual strand to give it a more finer diameter at the back there. Basically cutting it to a nice point. And we judge the distance we want it in. And then we tie that in just near the part of the hook there. Okay, that's good. Now, give it a few more turns there, and then we cut away the excess. So we've completed and we just need to whip finish the flight. Don't look too sturdy so I'll do it one more time. Get away the thread. And that is the bag fly. Simple tie. Um, what I like to do just at the end is put a dab of this um, hard head uh, cement. It's like a uh, uh, head cement that we put on all our flies, but it's black. And it gives a beautiful colour to the actual fly. So we'll put to the side and I like to use my dubbing needle, get a little bit of it on there and then dub it onto the fly, dab it onto the fly. So there we have the bag fly all nice and completed. Like I say, it's a great bait fish uh, smelt imitation and it um, really works well in our local waters around Ballarat, um, Tasmania. It's not local, but um, it works in Tassie. But our local waters especially. Uh, lakes like New Orleans Reservoir, Hepburn Lagoon, Can Curran Reservoir, Harcourt, um, and I could continue on and on. So um, that's the bag fly. Um, hope you've enjoyed this. Um, we'll have another great fly pattern in our next uh, episode. And um, thanks for watching, and uh, see you soon.